as you notice in the program, we made us made a, for the first time we are doing this, making a switch between oxidative stress, technologies, medicine, and COVID in order to give this chance of people to, to have synergy, to, to give a chance other doctors to know about oxidative stress and vice versa for the people that are dealing with oxidative stress to see in what kind of um, uh, um, sickness or diseases they can use oxidative stress. So that's why we put a te new technologies in medicine kind of in the middle of the oxidative stress. This is one reason. The second one is that our people presenting online, especially those in Eastern uh, United States and Canada, the only position they can present it is only at 11.30 because it's 11.30 p.m., middle of the night there. We cannot push it more. Every, everything else is outside there. It is in the middle of the night. Um, what, what I'm, uh, why I'm here, um, this was uh, my original idea to have new technologies in medicine because we are lacking behind uh, in this area. Many new amazing technologies are not in the mainstream. Probably they don't need to be in mainstream, but they have be, to be recognized and we have done. Uh, we, have, we are giving our contribution of that. Uh, we have, uh, um, in, when we were in Japan also, we, uh, we had a, a live broadcasting with Dr. Kimura. I think he's here. All his amazing achievement in uh, he is going to speak by him, for, him, for himself in uh, immunotherapy. Uh, and then we also we did with Dr. Hori and a live broadcasting of his specific, specific procedure. It is uh, very interesting. And then I invited him both, actually, Dr. Kimura and Dr. Uh, Hori, to come here because they were, by chance they fit very well in these new technologies. Uh, but the issue is that Dr. Hori had an injury, back injury about uh, three weeks ago, three and a half. I offered him to do the presentation by Zoom, but he said, um, his secretary Cecilia said that he is not able for the moment even to stand to do it on Zoom. So it's not life-threatening, but it's just, uh, you know. Uh, so I was thinking to cancel, but then I said, okay, why don't send in my slides? Since we did a live broadcasting, I'll do my best to present it. And then he sent the slides. So the first time I'm, I'm presenting, I'm not a medical doctor, but I'm presenting a, uh, medical as much as I can. So if I do any, uh, any, say any stupidity, I excuse myself because I'm not a doctor. So that's why I have the courage to come. I don't want all this to show. Uh, but since we followed, we broadcast it almost, I'm gonna show you the video in YouTube. It is almost two hours live broadcasting. It's the first in the world. Uh, uh, it's not a surgical, but it's a medical procedure broadcasted live for two hours in LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. All his procedure from the beginning to the end. And uh, uh, so we understood it and we explained to the general public what this is about. So, so that's why I am a little bit, uh, I, I know that, uh, sure, I do not know everything here because it's a medical jargon, but I'm going to concentrate it on the in the surface of things. So that's the history. So that's why I'm here. I wanted just this to be presented because he couldn't even present in Zoom. By the way, all this, this uh, you know, all the sessions in this summit for the first time are broadcasted in Zoom. People can attend in Zoom or they can present in Zoom. Those that cannot come. That's why I offered prof uh, Professor Dr. Hori to come, but he, apparently he can, couldn't do even in Zoom. So, this is a non-invasive cancer therapy with the latest medical technologies and the new treatment concept. And this, this we saw it with our, with our eyes. Uh, it is non-invasive, doesn't concern surgery, nothing, you know. Uh, no opening, uh, it is just a catheter that is included. It, it, it travels through the blood vessels until, uh, until the tumor and is new because it's not used. Sometimes some, uh, one presented in some medical conferences, the, uh, I, read, I read an article that 
the chair said, this is very interesting, but you should know this is not something standard. So this was uh, something that was mentioned before the presentation in another event. So this we don't like, but this is really interesting. So uh, basically, uh, during, the, during the live broadcasting, uh, I did a kind of a joke. I, I said that uh, Dr. Hori doesn't need uh, uh, nurses because basically he was doing the procedure himself. No nurses, and I said all, he had a big screen divided in several parts, and everything was guided through image therapy. So, and uh, I named all the screens his, his nurses. So zero nurses, actually, but actually six nurses, which were screens. So uh, this is the, uh, you know, the, they, they use the most um, uh, modern techniques in imaging technique. Dr. Hori's profession is an image, uh, you know, specialist. Radiology, so he knows uh, angio, he uses angio, uh, or, uh, angio procedure, yeah, here, angio hybrid system. And this is the major thing here, selective catheter inser insertion. What attracted me, this is material science. It is a polymer based 0.7 millimeter. You see, I don't need to read there what I remember. It's 0.7 millimeter diameter of this catheter. It's very flexible. So, and then it's a whole you know, channel in, in, in between that is used specific for a purpose. And this, this is a, a accurate image guidance. This, the, you see the screen there? It's a, it's a big screen TV with divided in four, actually. Divided in, in, these are the nurses I was joking for Professor Ori, because he doesn't need nurses. He just needs the four, four, uh, four uh, six, actually, there. Uh, and then, uh, so this is the, uh, the new thing. So we have material science here, used in medicine. We have imaging, angio, CT, hybrid system, and spherical embolic material. And this is the key also. This is uh, uh, what is the invention of Dr. Hori. Actually, he invented the big catheter and the spherical embolic material. But the new thing, is, if I am correct, is the combination of angio and CT hybrid system. I think, I don't know if the others use it, but as I have understood, it is. Uh, and here you see the blood vessels. It is a simulation of the blood vessels. Uh, I can go here. I don't have the. I don't have. Anyway, it's okay, because I didn't put my uh, level here. So in the two, in the uh, in the upper two parts, you see the blood vessel. It's a simulation of techniques you use in blood vessel. It guides him to put the catheter. In order for people that uh, just to simplify the procedure. Yeah, but I, I think this cannot. You cannot. No, but oh, okay. Do you see it? Okay. Because normally in the screen, these, these do not work. In the, it has to be electronic. Okay. So this is the, his, uh, his technique. And this is his office. We, uh, our, uh, our live broadcasting was done. It's a very nice area. Uh, it's a really magnificent area just uh, across uh, Osaka Airport. And then we visited him twice in uh, August and in, in October. So uh, this is a history of the technique. Uh, I was not aware of this, I just I saw it. So there is infusion, there are the breast cancer infusion, lung cancer infusion, embolization. It was used before by the vascular anomaly. Okay. In pulmonary, it was used by White as an embolization, but it's a different way of doing it. Uh, HCC, to tell the truth, I don't know what it is, since I told you. If I say in a stupidity, I'm not a doctor, I don't know what, what it does instead. Breast cancer, chemoembolization, uterine fibroid uh, embolization, joint embolization, lung and brain cancer chemo. Uh, this, this is a contribution of Dr. Hori in lung and breast cancer. And uh, it can be used in liver tumor and, and prostate. But prostate is a little bit difficult, if I understood well, from Dr. Hori. So it's, it's from 1960 to 220, the history. 
So this is a CT image that he uses in his office. Uh, as I said, there was a combination. Uh, these are the uh, images obtained from the, from the um, it's called apparently axial sectional images. So it's a cut of the human body uh, in horizontal that is in the vertical. Uh, this is coronal and sagittal images. And 3D images of the organ. This is, uh, I think, uh, he simulates the, the, in 3D the blood vessels. That this guides him with the catheter. And he uses all these techniques. Uh, Hitachi and Phillips, Toshiba uh, for Angio, and Canon for Angio, and MD CT scanner. Uh, now, this is the, um, the embolic material. Now, before, just to simplify for people that do not know that, because I, I ended directly without uh, making a resume of this. Uh, what is the technique? I have only 10 minutes ago. Basically, chemotherapy today, chemotherapy today, it is, uh, um, it reacts uh, in the entire body, in the entire body. And there's a lot of uh, side effects, numerous side effects, horrible side effects. The idea here, Dr. Hori uses this, this small catheter within his veins. He, he put it from here and he directs it wherever tumor it is. And then, but this is the first stage. The second stage, it is to inject chemotherapy, chemo, chemo material, chemo, chemotherapy a chemical directly to the tumor. That's the second stage. And the third stage, he uses this material, embolic material developed by him. He blocks the blood vessels that feeds the tumor. Could be one, could be two, could be three. Basically, all the blood vessels are blocked with this material. And then the catheter comes out, and it takes just five minutes to block the, 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 the we saw it, and to, to block the uh, place where they put the catheter. So this is the embolic material. So you inject it in 10 seconds, you see in one minute, it distributes basically block the vessel, the blood vessel, uh, in order to suffocate the tumor. So is expansion inside the vessel, drug loading uh, on the microsphere. Uh, and then you can see how it works, you see? So first is the, this is the second stage. First you put chemotherapy material, I mean um, chemical, to, uh, against the cancer, and then you block the vessel. And here it is how it goes. Pass through the mycocatheter, flow into the peripheral tumor, increasing the diameter and then flow into peripheral tumor, increasing the diameter even, uh, you know, further. But at the, end of, at the end of the procedure, you have blocked the vessel. It's not active anymore. There is no blood going to the tumor. Sometimes there are many, many vessels going in the tumor, but he blocks the major one and then goes to the second, I, we saw it, and goes to the second one. And this is how the drug is loading. This is the composition. I'm not going detailed. I have 10 minutes left. Uh, so uh, this is how the microsphere reacts. Uh, and this is the, the uh, heposphere. It's called heposphere. This is the, 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 the material that blocks the, uh, the blood vessel. So clinical cases, there are many clinical cases. He has used this for several years in liver cancer, for example. He has been very successful. Actually, it is his specialty. Without contrast, arterial, portal. So these are different ways of looking at the CT scan, if I'm correct. Uh, it's CT scan uh, in different uh, lights. In delayed phase, delayed phase is very important as, as far as I understand because it gives the right uh, information on the tumor or on the cancer. So arterial phase, you see, these are the screen you can see in the screen. We follow this. You, you put the catheter directly to the to the tumor, and you can see in real time. You see, in the, the, if you go in in our channel in YouTube, this is two hours. All this procedure is there. 
so prior to embolization, immediately after the embolization, you see you are not able even to detect the, the tumor, not because it's been gone, but because there is no any more blood uh, given to the tumor. So in Angi, so the moment you, you block the vessel, you have the, um, the Angi, min, Angi min image. The second one, after embolization, you are not able to even to see the tumor anymore. So just in five minutes, a big difference. Sure, the tumor is there because it doesn't disappear, but it's suffocated and it doesn't show anymore. It's kind of isolated. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is immediately after the embolization, and then you can see is a uh, parasimal phase, and then you can see it's basically you don't see anything after. The same idea, three miles after the embolization, he has followed the patient, and you can see. Uh, and then you can see uh, this is uh, still in the liver. You can see a lar large tumor. Uh, and then this is the 3D creation of the, of the, of the uh, blood vessels, and they put the catheter there. You, you can see in the lower right side, oh, mm, oh here, I forgot this. I thought it's the same thing. So you can see here the, how catheter goes up to here. These are different successes, different clinical cases from here to here. And then you see the differences between before and after, eight months after. So lung cancer, apparently, uh, when we did, it was uh, breast cancer. He treated the breast cancer live. Uh, here it is lung cancer, the most common cancer in the world, the most common cause of cancer death. And lung cancer is fed from bo uh, bronchial artery. And there are some clinical phases, diagnostic CT. Those that don't know, CT is a, is a, is a procedure that is a, uh, how can I say? It's, it's, it's a, a way to, to develop these images, because probably there are many that are not doctors here. So uh, this after two months, you can see the differences. And after four months, basically the tumor is isolated, is suffocated. There is no more blood vessel going into it. Different. Uh, this is clinical case, lung cancer, 50 years old. There are different uh, uh, cases. After two months, you can see the difference. And some publication from, uh, uh, from uh, Dr. Hori. And in the breast cancer, you can see, uh, you know, what the breast cancer can look like. And how, pr prior to treatment, this is how it does. It goes with the catheter there. And the goal also a catheter from here. It goes up to the breast. Well, that we saw. Six months, you see the difference. And uh, brief summary. It is non-invasive. You don't need operation. There is actually, it's not a s uh, surgery. You cannot even call a surgery. It's not a surgery. So development in medical technology in crucial, uh, is crucial for success of uh, this treatment. Microcatheters, angio CT, scans, 3D image, and embolic material are essential. I already mentioned this. Uh, I, uh, uh, initially, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma was the target. Modern technology makes it possible to target solid tumors. The non-invasive nature of his treatment is a major advantage. Future medical technology will be combined with this treatment method. Using this technique, cancer treatment will become much more sophisticated. So this is one way. Again, we, um, uh, as SIPs, we are open to new technologies. So there are different ways for immunotherapy. Is one uh, one one that Dr. Kimura will present. It's a fascinating uh, new technology also. But this is one that is uh, has been proven. You know, there is no side effects. There is no more chemotherapy that makes your life hell. Zero. 
So there is no more, you know, uh, making your life difficult and not to work, etc. The, the procedures uh, last one hour up to two hours. You, you go home, you don't never stay there. You could stay only one or two days, one day just to, to make sure that everything is okay. The risk of breaking the blood vessel is very low. The, the, the reason for staying two days is just to make sure everything is okay. But this is an amazing technique that... Uh, uh, this is what uh, we are about, to, to expose this technique uh, to the world. We know there, there are other you know, people that might not like the technique, etc., etc. There are reasons outside science, business reasons, etc. But uh, SIPS is here to expose all new technologies and all successes. We do not take sides, we do not uh, say this is good, this is bad, but we expose all new achievement from anyone. So this is uh, all, I have only one minute left. So uh, I hope I presented you without errors. Uh, so this is the first time I'm doing a, present, a medical presentation to medical doctors. <laughs> okay, hopefully I didn't do any error. Well, I read there, it's only a couple of terms I didn't understand, but it's okay. 